Previously, we spent 48 hours frantically searching for our cows who disappeared to a farm a mile and a half away across the mountain. But we made it. One down, one to go. Maintaining a farm, working, and building a house has challenged us day in and day out. We're working to develop skill in block laying, frame the exterior and interior walls, and return our land lily back to the flock. We we'll started today by working on the interior walls. I'd like to start getting some of these kickers pulled down and getting walls put up. And this is actually the easiest wall to build in the entire house, I believe, because all it is is two by four framing and it just goes straight down towards the front of the house. And we have no doors and no windows in this wall whatsoever. So it's gonna be fairly easy. It's gonna be two by four framing every 16 inches. We'll nail it down, get everything plumb, and we'll rock and roll. You guys may not know this, but Lily's getting dropped off for some babysitting time with Uncle Leon. He's gonna train her how to be a real sheep, no longer a pet for us. So on the plus side for me, what that means is, whenever I stand up, put down, she does not come against and rub and knock anything over. So this is gonna be actually a full-fledged working job site with no sheep allowed. So, we'll miss you, but you know, time to join the clock. If you guys look back there, Lily is hanging out. She's forgotten that we're here, so. I think we're gonna be able to make it back up to the house without her following us. That's Lily right there on the back of that tree. She's hanging out next to Leon. She's sleeping. So if we're quiet, she's not gonna catch yeah. us. We've been working to naturally integrate Lily back into the flock. That started with meeting the flock through the fence line and then meeting with them in the pasture once everybody calmed down and had gotten a chance to know each other. And now we're trying something new. So when we lead her down to the chicken coop while we're collecting eggs, Ellie and I are making ourselves busy around here and kind of just disappearing from Lily's sight. And so now the new thing is not announcing our departure we just get the eggs let her get busy and we disappear back up to the house and she can just hang out with the flock for as long as she wants until she realizes that we're gone and then she tends to come back up and bellow at the gate for us there's three girls laying eggs okay let's take the eggs from the other nests that don't have hens on them okay yep. how many do you think we got 14 <laughs> been a long time coming for her but I think that seeing her down here being so happy with everybody is a sign of success on our end that we've done our job and she is finally going to be the sheep <laughs> that she was always meant to be so we can rest easy she's in good hands and she knows how to get back to us if she needs to so it'll be fairly easy day we're gonna throw these two by four walls up there's no windows so it's gonna, be, it's gonna go fairly smooth. But the first- Famous thing, last words. I know, right? So <laughs> let's start with chalk on the line first. We'll put the bottom plate down. We'll put the two studs up next to the post. Frame in between, whammo, bammo, nail, and uh, plumb. Not in that exact order, but you got the point. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my first day on the job. I know it's not. This kicker right here needs to come down. Do you think I should put another kicker on there behind it to hold it in place? I'm kind of over the kickers at this point. I say we wing it. Let's wing it. And if it gets shot out <laughs> to the left or to the right, we pull it back straight. What do you think? Yeah, let's take you our want, chances. Do you want to put some bets or what? I think it's going to move. Didn't move. I win. I win. What did I win? Uh, back, okay, uh, the back rope with strings attached. <laughs> uh, first rope. How's it look, girl? Looks good. Looks like we have a lot of drywall work ahead of us. I hate drywall. <laughs> 
So just to give you guys a feel for where we're at in the interior walls, this entire stretch is where the homestead kitchen and all the cabinetry are going to be at. This area is dedicated to all of our supplies for processing and storing our own food from dehydrators to canning supplies to meat processing, extra egg storage, extra milk storage, soap making supplies, all of that kind of stuff is going to be housed here and not taking up space in the kitchen where we cook dinners and breakfast and have all of the food that we're just eating on a day-to-day -day basis. This is extra storage and extra prep space for all that kind of stuff. I hear Lily. Did you hear that? I did. She's bellowing. She's back. She's back. She's back. <laughs> I can't tell you guys. So, okay, I gotta be honest. A few tears have been shed over the last couple of days. <laughs> Like, I'm so happy for her, but my heart breaks. And then if I hear that little bellow that I recognize and she shows up, it's just like... Makes your day. It makes my day. Ellie! Look back. <laughs> so next, what we're going to do is a small portion right here. And we're gonna work our way down. You guys can see we have uh, some bracing coming down in our way. We're gonna take everything off. This post is actually attached to the exterior wall. So I'm hoping when I take this down, nothing moves. If it does, we'll pull it back plumb and make it right. But then we're gonna go ahead and turn this 90 all the way down to that exterior wall right there and bring a beam straight across. And once those are all set in stone and locked in, the entire thing's tied together and we shouldn't need any more kickers. We may need to do a kicker just on this wall here in the middle so it's not flopping. We'll put one kicker there, but all in all, 95% of these kickers will be pulled down and we're done. Good, babe. It's really good. But I think what we should do is before we pass it going that way, we should go ahead and build the wall going that way and into the uh, bedroom and the in the office. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. So the project's going very, very fast and smooth until it's time to lay out for the cabinets. Then Aaron grabs tape measure with no pencil and she just lays blocks of wood everywhere. Can we please use a tape measure and a pencil and no blocks of wood? We just mark and go. It makes my life so much easier. This block of wood represents the end of the cabinets coming this way in that direction. And then this, these blocks of wood represent the bench that I did center with the door right here. Okay. But it's missing, like there would technically be another block of wood right here. And then at the end of this imaginary block of wood would be more cabinets that go and stop at the end of this block of wood. And then the door it's centered between that block of wood and that wall right there. See what I'm talking about? Makes and you were afraid to step how? <laughs> okay, so I'll take my tape measure. We'll come off 24 inches. We'll mark it. We'll bring the, 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 the tape measure back to where the uh, cabinet stop. We'll mark it and we'll write bench. Okay? <laughs> bench goes there. And we'll keep on measuring down and just mark everything and lay it all out. And then I know where to put the pocket door. We're doing a pocket door, correct? Pocket door. Pocket door. Your favorite. I've been like hell bent on staying no to pocket doors the entire time. I'm not a big fan of pocket doors, but everywhere she wants to put pocket door. So we need a pocket door in this one location because there's just not enough room. Like the swing is going to take up too much space. You know what I mean? Usually it's okay if it swings to the left a little. And I lost it. And I <laughs> and I lost this fight, so I'm doing a pocket door. Only because I love you. Can I keep measuring with blocks of wood then? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> you want the opening to be 74. So this one here, that will mark your cabinet for you. <laughs> see, visually you can see it. <laughs> yeah, it looks like you really love the block method. <laughs> so I'll mark it. We don't want to leave this portion open. So we, you want dead center, right? Is that what you want, dead center? Yes. Okay. Before we go on this block method mess, we probably need a layout for typical cabinet sizes. 36, 36. That's 30, why I started at that end 12. over there. That block right there is cabinets on this side and that side. And there's a bench. Like I'm one step ahead of you, obviously. 
24 and a half, right there, 36. That's your cat right here, okay? You wanna do bench? Yeah. Right there, bench. 56 inches wide. Perfect. Decisions have been made. Yep, let's build a wall girl. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> If I could change a thing, you know, nothing would be changed. Cause I love you so, and I'm glad you came. Hi, girl. Well, that's good. She's locked in place. Let's go to work. Get some business to take care of. The coffee first. <laughs> coffee first. Our bed is for more than just sleeping, obviously. Like pugs, kids, kittens, cup of coffee. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Helix. Like most people, sleep is really important to us. Not just for our recovery overnight, but for our productivity the next day. Helix has premium mattresses customized to fit your needs that come all rolled up in a box and are conveniently shipped to your door for free within the US. Everyone is different and Helix knows that, which is why they made the sleep quiz to match your unique body type and sleep preferences to match the perfect mattress for you. They have something for everyone's unique taste. And if you sleep with a partner, you can even take the sleep quiz together and find some that's a perfect compromise for both of you. We were matched with their Midnight Lux mattress, which is a medium feel mattress and perfect for side and stomach sleepers like Josh and I. Instead of tossing and turning all night, we're falling asleep, we're staying asleep, and we're waking up with our backs having felt supported all night long. Plus, one of the things I really appreciate about Helix is that unlike other mattress brands, Helix mattresses do not contain fiberglass, which can be harmful to your health. If it makes you nervous to buy something that you haven't tried before, Helix offers a 100-night sleep trial to ensure that you love it. Plus, there's a 10-year warranty, and they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans. We love our Helix mattress and think that you would too, so if you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. You can click our link in the description box below or go to helixsleep.com slash wild wonderful to get 20% off your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. Now let's get back to the build. So we just got the call this afternoon that the commercial kitchen exhaust hood company is actually going to be able to make it all the way out to our cafe this afternoon. And they're coming from two and a half hours yes. away. It's been really hard to get somebody out here that's gonna be capable of doing this. And it's such a crucial part in the step of finishing up the cafe and getting it open that we're like dropping everything, getting in the car yeah. and making this a priority. Yes, no appliances can get installed until the hood is up and out of the way. The last time we did an update for the cafe on this channel, we had just come through and completely gutted the place. We revealed all of the original wood rafters as well as the original steel beams. We knocked out some of the original windows to be able to put those back in. And since then, drywall has been installed. The place has a new fresh coat of paint. A huge mural was painted on our building next door to the cafe. It depicts a lot of the Appalachian life and the history of Romney, as well as what encompasses the cafe and the community. The artists Kerrigan and Jericho did an absolutely amazing job. Two new bathrooms have been built and plumbed in, and we're getting really close to the finish line. One of the last pieces that is really holding us up has been this huge commercial kitchen hood that we somehow managed to get in here, and now it needs to get installed professionally. And at that point, everything is up off of the ground so we can actually paint the floor, get all the rest of the kitchen appliances in and installed, and then we can finally have our final inspection with the fire marshal and also the health department and start training employees and get this place opened up. You got eight right here, and you got five right three, so you're, you're yeah. right, right around there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what, what, what we call the best is, yeah, we worked out in the back, yep. we just run the ductwork, and then after, I gotta make some there. So the guys are just trying to figure out exactly how we're gonna fit the makeup air system and all of the exhausting, the lines, the ductwork, everything from inside the kitchen to outside the kitchen in this little alleyway that goes back to the parking behind us. And I was starting to get a little bit nervous <laughs> with the amount of space that we have, but it looks like everything is going to work out. All right, so fingers crossed. We're gonna mount it up top there. We need 190, 290s, 390s. 
All right, so we're good. The window needs to come out. We knew the window was gonna come out eventually for this. We left it in so nobody gets in and out, but it's gonna come out. The exhaust yeah, is gonna come through and goes up to the exhaust hood, and that ductwork's all water duct. They're gonna come out and go up and pipe over to the makeup air unit. And that does not need to be welded. So what happens is, as exhaust is sucking out through the hood itself in the kitchen, it also replaces the air, makeup air unit. The air comes in and replenishes the air as it sucks out. So if you didn't have the makeup air, all it's doing is sucking everything out of the kitchen and the cafe, out of the building. The makeup air brings air back in. So it actually, where the hood's at, air gets sucked out and new air comes back in and just flows like this right at the hood itself. So this is huge news because this was our like sticking point like this is what needs to happen in order for all the other things behind it to happen through. we can't do anything in the kitchen until that's up meaning install any of the appliances get anything in there because that hood is so massive once that's up in the air and done we can start bringing everything in and getting everything connected and guess what we're up in a cafe a little behind schedule but we're on our way <laughs> it's actually a pretty big bar as a matter of fact oh yeah it it's huge so this entire area is all dedicated to pastries, both in a refrigerated case, and then also some countertop pastries with room for packaging for mm -hmm. employees, and then also a place for customers to order and check out at. And this is gonna wrap all the way around so that we have a countertop bar seating for people coming all the way down here, right across from the barista area where the espresso machine, all of the grinders, all of that good stuff is gonna be. That's Possibly Josh's favorite spot. Yes, that's when you guys see me, I'm gonna be right back there making drinks. <laughs> and this right here behind me is actually a bakery window. So this is going to be all framed out and you're gonna be able to see through the glass to all of the amazing baked goods, but also past it and get a little bit of a glimpse into the kitchen and all yes. the goodness that's going on in there. That's gonna be all brick and power right through too. So yes. we're gonna keep the flow of the brick going all the way around, flowing down behind the bar. We, as you guys know, we're going for the old school rustic feel with the hatched windows, exposed ductwork, brick in the walls, old school bar. It's kind of paying an ode to yeah. the original building. We tried to keep as much of the material in here as we could and then bring back some of the aspects that were damaged or missing. Yes. Before it gets too late, we just want to head down and double check that Lily is in fact still with the crew. So we're just going to sneak down there and try to go undetected. <laughs> I'm sure she probably is still with them, but... It's bittersweet for Erin. <laughs> I just want to make sure that Lily's where she should be before nightfall. She's going to be really quiet once we get down there because if she hears our voices, she's going to try and follow us back. Oh, yes, she will. Get a head count. I got 13 on my count. She's down there with them. How you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be her first night out alone. Yeah. Or not alone. She's got the flock. The first one with the flock. That's funny. I'm gonna miss her so much as she's all grown up and was found. She's gonna come back and visit just like Leon does. Yeah, and maybe she'll come back with her babies. Yeah, won't that be special? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's go. Okay. I'm happy for her. Yeah. When I was down at the chicken coop yesterday, I realized that Leon and his crew had officially snapped off the pipe running along the bottom of 
our chicken coop here that has all of the nipple waterers on it. So our rainwater catchment system is completely rendered useless at this point until we fix that. Josh luckily has all the replacement parts because yes, we have dealt with this before. Thanks to good old Leon. Leon. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So we're gonna change a few things up. Yes. We're gonna do, it's gonna come down and come back up into the chicken coop. So the barrel's yay tall up high. So it's gonna come down go like this, comes back up a little bit, right into the chicken coop and water seats its own level. So it's gonna pump down and pump back up, so. And because it's inside the chicken coop where Leon and his crew no don't have damage. access, we have officially solved the issue, yeah. you think? Hopefully so, we'll see. Leon's pretty smart, he might figure out how to get in there. Here comes trouble. He does, look at him. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's good to have you back, Dax. Oh yeah, right there. That's the spot. Oh yeah, you like that? He loves it. Oh. <laughs> we built this chicken coop to be as self-sufficient as possible. So the only real work that we put into with the chickens is occasionally moving their coop and also refilling their bulk feeder whenever it runs low. But other than needing to collect eggs daily, we're not actually really having to put any work into the coop itself. So keeping this coop in good condition and getting the rainwater catchment system set back up and functioning properly is quite important. Otherwise, we're gonna be down here every day filling up waterers and we don't need any extra work at this point. <laughs> Should be good. We have the male adapter installed. Next thing we're gonna do is flip this barrel back up. We're gonna prime everything and we're gonna come out the bottom barrel like this. It's gonna come over and then pop back up into the coop and come over for all the ladies to drink out of and a couple boys. But it'll be super simple. Hello, girls. Do something like that. That's low enough for me, you think? Yeah, definitely. Is that not too low? Too low? Probably not. Got to cut this off. We got to turn a 90 down, a 90 over. Do a 45 and kick to the right location. Coming down. Not you again, Lily. <sighs> How's that, girl? I could probably come tight to here. So I'll come down about that far below the floor drawers itself. And it'll be, it'll be so tight, there shouldn't be any room for it to get bumped around, knocked around, and broken like the one previously hanging down from the push into and snap. Yeah, they're pretty big. They're not gonna be able to get under like that right there. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll run it hold it tight. It should be fine. So this right here is what's going to connect. I'm going to cut him, take it, and just push up just like that. No, sir, you wouldn't know the name. It's prettier than heaven and where I'm at the world. But it ain't got no other claims to fame. All right, Carter, power it up, dude. All righty. So we're back in action. We have water filling it up. The problem is when the sheep busted the pipe, it all drained out. So now we're here to fill it all up. And then hopefully when the rain comes through here, it keeps refilling the entire thing. So we don't got to come back with the pump and the uh, water. You got a blue one? Yeah. Let's see. It looks, it looks uh, not like the green one I got. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. I'll take these for you and you can fill the messy boxes up, okay? Okay. I'll come in and help you in a sec. Yeah. It works. They're dripping a little bit. I just tied them up real fast, and now chickens will come through here, tap them, get themselves a fresh drink of water. All in all, success. That's enough. That's Lily right there, mixing in with everybody. It's funny to look back and remember that at the end of 2022, we said 2023 was going to be the year we slowed down. Instead, we kicked it into high gear, as if the past four years were somehow any slower. But tonight we're doing something that we don't do often enough. We're giving ourselves a pass for the entire rest of the day and doing nothing except for eating pizza and hanging out. 